Okay, so this is the homework for Unit 8, Lesson 4, and this is going to demonstrate how to factor, answer questions that say factor completely. So number one, factor completely, the expression 2x squared plus 10x minus 12 is equivalent to, and it's one of these, so you know that you have to factor out a 2, but if you didn't have the... Um, multiple choice you could tell right now that once it says factor completely that there's going to be at least two steps here and that each number has a factor a greatest common factor that goes into each one and that is two so just remember once you factor out that two you have an x squared here because two times x squared equals two x squared and you factor out the 2 from the 10, 2 times what equals 10, 2 times 5 equals 10. And remember, you didn't factor out an x because x was not a common factor to all the terms. So minus, and then 2 times what equals negative 12, 2 times negative 6 equals negative 12. So once you have that, you know that you do have to set you have to factor this trinomial not only because the choices have that but just because the trinomial is a, is a product of two binomials so you have x and x here because this is x squared what two factors multiply to 6 and that add or subtract to 5 so this question is a good question you have 3 6 times 1 that you could use um, 6 minus 1 equals 5 and 3 uh, 3 plus 2 equals 5 but you notice that you have to multiply to a negative number so to multiply to a negative one has to be positive and the other has to be negative. So if you made, all right, to multiply to a negative, one has to be positive and one has to be negative. So that means if, if you made a uh, positive, say po three positive and two negative, that will not equal five. And vice versa, if you make three negative and two positive, it will not equal five. It will equal either one or negative one. So that means 6 and 1 are definitely the factors here. Which one is positive? Which one is negative? Well, to make a, to add to a positive or subtract to a positive 5, you have to have the positive with the larger number. And just to check this out, you can do, sorry, let me erase that. You could do basically 6 times negative 1 is negative 6. 6 minus 1 is 5. And that's basically it. So, number 2 is your answer. For number 2, it says factor completely. This is another factor completely question. So, um, if you take a look at all the factors here, and just taking a look at the numbers first, you know that 3 is a common factor. And if I'm going to check if x is a common factor. It's not. So right there, you have that. And then we're going to just go ahead and put 3 times x squared, because 3x squared. 3 times what equals negative 3x? Well, 3 times x equals negative 3x. And 3 times what equals negative 18? 3 times 6 equals negative 18. Once you have that down, you're going to just take a look at your choices. And, and all of a sudden, you have, wait a minute, this is your answer. But is this answer factored completely? Is that factored completely, or is it just factored a little bit? It's factored completely only if you can't factor this trinomial. Let's, let's go ahead and try to factor that trinomial. If we could factor it, that means 
um, one is not your answer. So I'm just going to put the three out here, and I'm going to put the x here and the x here. Two numbers that multiply to six and that add to add or subtract to negative one. I'm going to put two numbers that multiply to six is six times one and three times two. Again, with the same factors, but this time you have to make a one out of it. So that means six and one is out. So I'm just going to put three and two. You have to multiply to a negative. You have to multiply to a negative. So that means one of these terms has to be positive, one of them has to be negative. To multiply to this neg to add to this negative one, you have to put the negative with the larger number and the positive with the smaller. So if you do negative three times two is negative six, negative three plus two is negative one. This is your answer to it was tricky because one looks like it would be the answer. It's not it's not factored completely. So that's the reason why. When factored completely, number three, the expression is three x squared um, three x squared minus nine x plus six is equivalent to when factored completely. Let's go ahead and take a look. I'm going to take a look at the numbers first. I don't even look at anything else, and I notice that 3 is a greatest common factor. Then I look for the x's. Um, x is not a part of all of these terms. So that means that it is not a greatest common factor. So 3 times what equals 3x squared? 3 times x squared equals 3x squared. 3 times what equals negative 9x? 3 times 3x equals negative 9x. And 3 times what equals positive 6? 3 times positive 2. And that is one part. So now we have to factor this trinomial. So let's go ahead, put the parentheses down, and let's see where it takes us. Put the 3 on the outside, you know that. So I, I actually think that it has to be 3 or 4, just taking a look at it. Now I know that um, just multiplying 2 is pretty easy, 2 times 1. So I'm going to put x here, x here. 2 and 1. I have to multiply to a positive but add or subtract to a negative 3. If I multiply to a positive it has to be negative times a negative or positive times a positive. If I have positive times a positive 2 plus 1 would be 3, positive 3. This is a negative 3 so I'm going to put negative and negative. And if I just check it, negative 2 times negative 1 is a positive 2. Negative, one minus, uh, negative 2 minus 1 is negative 3. So 4 is your answer. And that is, that is that. Number 4, it says factor completely. And this expression, I'm going to take a look at the numbers first. So I know that 2 is a greatest common factor. Y is not a part of each of these terms. So that means 2 alone is the greatest common factor. 2 times what equals y squared? 2 times y squared equals 2y squared. 2 times what equals 12y? 2 times 6y equals 12y. 2 times what equals negative 54? 2. Sorry, let me put that out there. Move this out a little bit. And you're looking, so 2 times what equals negative 54? And that is negative 
27. Again, if you have problems with it, just take your calculator and do um, 54 divided by 2. Right now you're looking for terms that multiply to 27. So I'm going to go over here and put 27 times 1. Now, 27 times 1 multiplies to 27, but there's no way to make a 6 out of it. So the only other two factors that multiply to 27, it's 9 times 3. Can you make 6 out of 9 times 3? Yeah. 9 minus 3 equals positive 6. So let's see. 9 minus 3 equals positive 6. And 9 times negative 3 equals negative 27. So I know 9 and 3 are my factors. And I have to multiply to a negative. That means 1 has to be positive and 1 has to be negative. And I have to add or subtract to a positive 6. So the larger, the larger sign goes with the larger number. 9 minus 3 equals 6. 9 times negative 3 equals negative 27. So this is your answer. And number 1 is that choice. Which one is not equivalent? Just be careful with this. Which one is not equivalent to? Um, I would just go ahead and do... Um, do a uh, distributive property for each one and and then just get your answers and because you, you're just gonna have to figure out which one is not equivalent um, so I am going to do this one 2x times x is 2x squared that looks good so far because it has to be a 2x squared right 2x times 3 is 6x and then two, um, sorry, four, four times x is four x, and this is plus twelve. You can see, and I hope I don't have to put this together. Um, you can see that 6x plus 4x, if you combine these, is 10x. So it's 2x plus 10x plus 12. That's good. This is out. Now 2x times x is 2x squared. That's good so far. And then 2x times 2 is 4x. And 6 times x is 6x. So already I know that the middle part is 10x. I just need 6 times 2 to be 12 and it is. This will come out to be this again. If you combine these 6x plus 6, uh, 4x, this is out. 2x times x is 2x squared. Uh, 2x times 4 is 8x. Three times x is 3x. Wait a minute. 8x plus 3x is 11x, and this is plus 12. So this one is not equivalent. All right, number three is not equivalent. That's your answer. Um, just right here is where you could see it. This would be 11x. So this whole trinomial here would be 2x squared plus 11x, which is this plus 10x, um, and plus 12. So this is the one that is not equivalent, number three. Number six, um, so it says the expression 
4x squared minus 25 is equivalent to okay so um could be a couple of different things here so let's go see if what's going on uh, so I have something called the difference of squares here all right so just remember as soon as you see this negative 25 it has to be a plus 5 and a minus 5 a plus 5 and a minus 5 see how this is negative 5 and a negative 5 that's not it all right so it's either this this or this the way um, these these work is if you see this is a square perfect square difference of squares it has to be the same thing times the same thing but the, there's one that's positive and one that's negative that's how we get the negative 25 all right so I'm looking at this one because this is the same thing times the same thing. And it's not four. You know how like this is four and this is one. This is four and this is one. That's not the difference of squares. Because it has to be the same thing times the same thing. And then plus and minus. Plus and minus. But this one is exactly the same. So I'm just going to put the 2x plus 5. And I want to see if it distributes so that the middle two terms cancel out. All right, 2x times 2x is 4x squared. 2x times negative 5 is negative 10x. 5 times 2x is positive 10x. And then 5 times negative 5 is negative 25. At the end, you do have 4x squared. And the negative 10x, positive 10x cancel out, minus 25. So 3 is your answer. This is the difference of squares. Moving down to number 7. The same thing is happening. This is a perfect square as well as this. And this is a negative 36, the difference of squares. So take a look. This is the same exact for 7x minus 6 times 7x minus 6. Guess what? negative 6 times negative 6 is a positive 36 this is out this is the same exact thing that's multiplied I'm not even gonna go through it this is not alright so I'm just gonna leave this here and by the way um, if you do the first step here I mean you could cancel this out right now this is the first step right the distributive property 24.5 times 24.5 if you just do it in your calculator, six hundred point two five. It does not equals forty nine. All right, so three has to be your answer, and just let's just check that out. Seven x times seven x forty nine x squared. bad looking X right all right so 7x times 6 and it's all positive 7x times 6 is 42x moving on negative 6 times 7x is negative 42x And negative 6 times 6 is negative 36. So what you have is those middle two terms in the, in the 
the difference of squares canceling out. You could recognize the difference of squares right away, and they always do it on the regions. These are all regions questions. They cancel out, and guess what? You have 49x squared. There's all these differences of squares. You have to know how to recognize them, and it's minus 36. It just it, it creates a nice big, sh a really great shortcut for yourself. All right, all right. Look at number eight again. Take a look. Square root, perfect square, perfect square, and this is minus. So again, we're looking for two numbers. What's the square root of 16? What's the square root of 81? So we're looking for numbers. The square root of 16 is 4. Right? So this is 4. And this one is 9. Right? So we're looking for the first term to be 16x squared. 8 times 8 is not that. This is gone. 8 times 8, that's 64x squared. If this was 64x squared, that you know those would be in contention. Now, 4 times 4, 4x times 4x, that's 16x squared. 4x times 4x, that's 16x squared. But remember, the way this works is that it has to be multiplied to negative 81. Those two terms in the middle will always cancel out in the difference of squares. So it has to be 9, a positive 9, times a negative 9 positive 9 times a negative 9. Not negative times a negative, that would be a positive 81. This is out, 3 is your answer, you really don't even need to do any work, but we'll do it. 4x times 4x is 16x squared. 4x times 9, 4x is 36x. Negative 9 times 4x is negative 36x. And then negative 9 times positive 9 is negative 81. And that is the difference of squares. And you have 16x squared minus 81. Number 3 is your answer difference of squares just tremendously important um, for the regions. Now, difference of squares again, what do you think? 18, is that a perfect square? No, it's not. 50, perfect square? No, it's not. This is not the difference of squares. All right, so let's try to talk about what the greatest common factor of each number is. Can we pull that out? Because I guarantee once we pull that out, the difference of squares will be in there somewhere. So let's talk about it. We're talking about 18 and 50. What is the greatest common num common factor that goes into 18 and 50? If looking at this, I'm just going to say it's probably 2. Look at all my choices. I'm using that. All right. Um, just say 18 doesn't go into 50. Just going down, uh, 9 doesn't go into 50. 6 doesn't go into 50. Just going all the factors of 18 and then just comparing it. Guess what? 2 goes into both. And they do not have an x in both. So th that's not a common factor. So 2 times what equals 18x squared? 2 times 9x squared equals 18x squared. And 2 times what equals negative 50? 2 times negative 25. Do you recognize that the in, inside the parentheses is the difference of squares right here? That's what we're talking about. So 2. And then we're going to have two sets of parentheses set up. And one has to be positive and one has to be negative. One has to be positive, one has to be negative. What times what equals 25? This is a perfect square. It has to be 5 times 5. 
5. Positive 5 times negative 5 is negative 25. What? Obviously, this is x times x, but what's the square root of 9? 9 is a perfect square. So we're talking about 3x and 3x. Do you notice that you have 3x times 3x, 5 times negative 5? It's, the, it's basically the same with different signs. Right? 3x plus 5 and a 3x minus 5. The difference of squares. Perfect square. Perfect square. So right away, 3 is my answer. Just to go over this, uh, 3x plus 5 times 3x plus 5, it has to be, it can't be 5 times 5 at the end, positive times positive, because you always have, you have that negative. And it can't be negative times negative, because there is a negative answer here. So this is out as well. Um, and uh, negative 25 times positive 25 is, is not 50, all right? And they just put that, so, you know, if, I don't know why they put that. Uh, if people add them or whatever they do to get to negative 50, and that's it. All right, so number 10, let's just take a look at it. Um, we have 36x squared. minus 100. So, I, from my choices, like I would do this right away as the difference of squares. Um, but, but from my choices, I don't see that. All right, and um, so I'm, I really do think that they want you to take out the greatest common factor first and I'm just looking at my choices here to kind of just guide me to where we want to go and I'm just so I'm just gonna look at 36 and 100 and since 36 and 100 have a common factor what is the greatest common factor that goes into both numbers so I know that 36 does not go into 100, right? Obviously, I'm just gonna just gonna show you, just go through, go through like this. That's it, all right? You know, 36 is not a part of it. Um, is six a part of it? Well, they they took out four and two. Six is 30. Six has a. If you didn't have the uh, the multiple choice, say six goes into 36, but does six go into 100? No, it doesn't. All right. And, and you, basically, that's how you would go about it. But let's just take, first off, if you're looking for the greatest common factor, 4 is greater than 2. So if 4 goes into uh, 36, and obviously 4 does go into 100, then that is your greatest common factor and you could cancel these out because the greatest common factor is the greatest number that goes into both. 2 might go into 36 and 100 but it, that's not the greatest common factor. So now you have it down to this and let's just go ahead and put 4 on the outside because that is the greatest common factor. So um, 4 times what equals 36? 4 times 9. 4 times 9x squared equals 36x squared. And 4 times what equals negative 100? That's 25. Notice that you have perfect squares again, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to write down And you know, looking at the choices, right, you have definitely three, remember this is a perfect square, that's 3x, and this is 3x. The difference is squares, you know how it works, put a plus and a minus. What times what equals 25? 5 times negative 5. 
can't be positive positive or negative times negative because then you would not get a ne uh, negative answer two is your answer and that is basically it so I just wanted to show you um, uh, this is exactly what I when I saw this at first um, I I said all right this is a perfect square and this is a perfect square so I'm just gonna say all right so the 6 times 6 equals 36 and 10 times 10 equals 100 right so I don't know what that is so if if I if that's what I'm going by um, this is the difference of squares so I put 6x times 6x right because this is the difference of, of, uh, of squares 6x times 6x equals 36x squared right but then look what happens 6x times negative 10 is negative 60 x and then this is positive 60x and this is a negative 100 and at the end you have 36x squared minus 100 so why isn't that your answer 6x plus 10 squared oh 6x plus 10 times 6x minus 10 well that's not a choice so they're asking which one is equivalent to 36x squared and even though I would have done this first this is the wrong answer because it's not there right so even though it comes out to the same thing and and again like it's it is confusing but you have to let it when it's multiple choice you have to let that guide you all right so two is your answer because now like we're gonna have to do all right this is not a part of what the choices are possible answers are so that means we're gonna have to see if a common factor can go into 36 and 100 and it does four this one right here number nine taking a look at this um, the common factor is two that go into both so that's what you kind of factor out is first going back to um, number number three uh, number six uh, there is no common factor between four and 25 all right so that's why you you there's no common factor between these two so that's why you wouldn't factor that out then you take a look at your choices and hey like you know that's basically the way you would do that and that's why number 10 is a little tricky but then when you look at your choices you know you have to try a different way and you notice that 36 and 100 you have to search for that factor well the factors are right here four is the greatest common factor two goes into both but the thing is two does not count because four already goes into both so this is the greatest common factor so it has to be either one or two all right and that is the homework and the review on factoring completely with special cases